Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we are going to review Ender 5 S1. It is released in November 2022 with MSRP at $559. The first 100 unit sale price is around $469. Then, quick enough, you start seeing it on sale, like this and this. It continues to drop price below $400 in March 2023. Soon enough, it gets around $300 on sale price occasionally. Main reason? It has one strong competitor. Ender 5 S1 is an update for all Ender 5 series. Unlike Ender 3, it has cube style frame. The build plane not longer travels on the Y axis. Instead, the extruder is moving both X and Y direction on top of the frame. It is supposed to be printing faster than the Vaseline due to the less weight on Y axis. There are also many designs focused on further improved overall rigidity and stability, like this frame brace, build plate support, and bigger linear rods. Creator state that it could reach 250 mm per second print speed and 1000 hour 100% success printing on that speed. Sounds good to me. The major change from O and the 5 series is this spider full metal direct dry extruder. It could reach up to 300 Celsius degrees, which is able to print high temperature filament like polycarbonate and carbon fiber. But the filament is located on the side of the printer and guided by this TPFE tubing all the way from the side to the center. The heat sink under this cable is also larger than normal size heat sink, which will better prevent heat creep. At the same time, there is one 5015 fan mount behind this extruder to provide part cooling. The motion system does not have a major upgrade. It is still the combination of T-slot and wheels. And the 5 s one is not a core XY printer. There is one step motor to power each of the X and Y axes separately. This motion system design has a shorter tension belt across the entire gantry, which is better on paper. A two-side sharp step motor and rod all the way across the x-axis, and a belt on both left and right side to control the y-axis motion. Two 12mm linear rod on z-axis, and one lead screw. Instead of another set of lead screw and motors, they are used two braids to improve the stability of the build plate. The build plate size is 220mm cube. The build plate is PC cold sheet, which is same with Ender 3S1. It provides decent adhesion, but it is also easy to leave stain on the surface. Why not a PEI sheet when you go for that price point? On the cover, there is 32-bit silent mainboard with silent stepper motor driver. The power supply is read at 350 watt, and the energy consumption at idle, heating, and printing. The noise level on idle and printing. It is a generally pretty quiet printer. This printer comes with CR torch to provide auto bed leveling feature. The touch screen has a little to no noticeable delay. The UI on the touch screen is pretty much a carryover from the old and the 5 series, but they did some improvement on the layout. The UI layout is straightforward and easy to use. It also comes with a filament runout sensor. The SD card is a lot better than the micro SD card. Due to the cube style frame, Ender 5 S1 doesn't come with most part pre assembled right out of the box. The top of the frame and extruder come with pre assembled You still need to put four beams and a base. It might take you around 30 to 45 minutes, which is not too bad, but also not great too. You will need to pay attention when you put a vertical beam on the base. You better use the right angle rules to confirm the vertical beam is 90 degrees to the base. And also, the brace is a little bit tricky to put on. There's no printer configuration on Prusa Slicer at this, so I just use the Ender 5 profile and change the bed size and retraction setting according to the paper. We are going to run the test print on the stock mounting setup. And I actually have a Sony pack and a Raspberry Pi. We are going to convert it to Clipper firmware later in a separate video. Test 1. Calibration Cube I start with a calibration cube. 
The acceleration was set at 2000 mm per second squared, and the print speed is at 7 mm, which is not the fastest value in today's standard. The prints turn out nicely. The layer is smooth overall, but you can see there is a significant amount of ringing on the top at the right side of the text. The dimensions are very accurate on the both X and Y axis, but Z axis is a bit off. I further increase the speed to 150 mm per second and test with Banshee. As you can see, there is a big cooling issue in the overhand area. Rotate to the back, it has a major defect as well. The detail finishing over small parameter are look okay. I reduced the speed to 70 million per second in 1500 acceleration. At this time, I got a very decent quality bench. The surface looks good, and the overhang looks good too. Next, I want to test whether if there is a Z bubble issue. As you can see, there is no Z bubble as far as I can tell. Let's continue with PETG filament. A complex model was running. There is a lot of a tree support and tiny primary. The tree support did not make it and cooking a lot of spaghetti. Let me just adjust the support setting and run again. The quality looks acceptable. Some string in here and there, and a lot of blobs on the right wing. I want to see how well it does with a wise model printing. The print turned out perfect. I continue to run the vice model with a TPU film. There is a bad TPU clock after one third of the print. And I switched to another TPU with exactly the same G code. It finished the print at this time. The lower portion layer does not fuse together well, as you can see. But the upper part looks good. I would like to run longer prints before I switch it clip for me. I set a vertical shell to 5 layers so I can do some sanding later. Let me remove the support first. The print looks pretty bad on the bottom area and big degrees of overhead. Other than that, it looks okay to me.
Final thought of Annual 5S1. Well, you have gone through a test print assignment with me. You saw print speed and quality of different filament. Is it worth $550? I'll say no. Leave aside the Bamboo Lab P1P that costs a bit higher. Creality themselves have released K1 at $599. With possible a better speed potential and print quality. Also, the K1 is fully enclosed. For this one, it asks for $60 dish dollar for the four side panels, and on top of that, 70 something additional dollar for the top cover, to make it become fully enclosed. This is an addition of $130, and you need to add Sony pack or Raspberry Pi to convert to Clipper to enable the full potential. Really? Let me do the math for you. If you are someone who bought this one close to MSRP, that's $550 and 130 for the full enclosure. Let's say 100 for the clipper. Let's seven seventy dollars Wait, $780. Hell no, let's just not, let's just ridiculous in today's market. But leave the money aside, the N5 S1 indeed is a great upgrade from N5 and N5 Pro. The print quality is decent if you can get a color break right. The print speed is better than the old and the 5 series. The full metal exuder is capable to print many different filaments. The printer itself is quiet during operations. On the other hand, the bolting tube that's guiding the filament makes it hard to switch the filament. Every time you need to unplug the tubing and jack the filament on the lower part, and then fitting a new filament all the way to the exuder. It is come to worse if you're trying to fit the flexible filament like TPU, the part cooling fan is not that great when you are printing in a higher speed or with a lot of overhands. The initial setup time is a lot longer than a lot of its competitors. But the main deal breaker is the price. With the $550 MSRP, you need to pay money to unlock the enclosure and the clipper and fully release its potential. It's just, just a joke. It's just not going to work out. If they are selling these things back to 2021, they might get better selling figures, but not in today's market. However, if you can get it with the right price, I would say around $350, I would still consider it as a good deal. It is nothing wrong with the printer itself, it's just something wrong with the money. Or maybe it's my issue. Thank you for watching, I will see you soon. Damn it, my printer payment's due tomorrow. <laughs>